And my boy uh, Steve Mako, which is a two-time national champion, two-time runner-up, four-time finalist. That's insane at heavyweight. Mako was the hottest high school recruit anyone can remember. So far, he's lived up to his nickname, The Bear. Undefeated, ranked number one in the nation. Steve is one of the best collegiate heavyweights I've ever wrestled, and I love the style. I watch him win a couple of his titles. So when he joined ATT, I was ecstatic because I always thought he was one of the best wrestlers to compete at heavyweight, you know? Especially with his, his mix of judo and wrestling and his sheer conditioning and just grit, you know? So when he came on over the team, it was just amazing. So any any chance I can get with Mako to get in there, I love to, you know? And he's, uh, he's great at what he does, you know? He's been coached by some of the finest institutions in the world. You know, he was at, um, he was under John Smith in Oklahoma. He was also with the Brands Brothers in Iowa. So he, he knows a good amount of not just how to compete himself, but how to get guys ready to competition, how to make them compete. So whenever I'm with Marco, it's always a privilege, man. It's always, uh, it's something fun to have, you know. He's just a dog, man. He's my boy. We've been going at it for many years, just training, pushing each other, just getting the best out of workouts in a, in a healthy environment. No matter how much we push each other, there's never no love loss. There's never no, no problems or nothing like that. He's not the type of punk that goes online and talks about training sessions and things like this, you know, how other cowards that we know be doing. But Dustin's just a man, man. That's another person that whenever I get a chance to train with him, I jump at the situation. I, uh, I really want to set myself apart from the pack, from the fight world. I want to be in my own league, and Usman's soul is the path to that, you know? I, I want to punish this individual, and I want to take what's mine, man. don't have many good things to say about the dude as a person or as a competitor, so I'm not really going to talk about him too much. But I will say this, when we compete, the world will know that there was a vast difference between me and that individual. Masvidal cross-eyed, he'll punch him in the face. Street Jesus doesn't fuck around. <laughs> Masvidal don't give a fuck. Yeah. Connor wants that belt from Masvidal. It's going to be Kamaru versus Jorge. I had a good run in 19. It's going to be better 2020. I guarantee you that. 2019 was the year of George Masvidal. Whoever it is with that belt, you're ready to hand it over to armed robbers. Well, I'm from Miami, Florida, so obviously Radio Row, numerous people had reached out, huge outlets had reached out. It's the game before the game during Super Bowl week. The Super Bowl is so big, it's so commercial, it's, it typifies, uh, you know, American capitalism. Every network with a stake in the NFL has a set on Radio Row. And they wanted me to come by and do my thing, you know, give them some, give them some love, and we were more than cool with it, you know? Jorge Masvidal joining me on Radio Row. I gotta be honest with you, there was only one person I wanted to talk to at Radio Row this entire time. The BMF champion. I'm not waiting for no man, you know, time waits for nobody. So I'm gonna get somebody else to baptize. All right, so is that somebody else, Usman? Usman is looking like him, you know. We're gonna sit down with the UFC, run these numbers, and if they make sense, Usman's getting baptized on TV. And right around the same time this idiot, Usman, had been fucking talking gang of shit, you know, heaps of shit. And I'm no hater, I give credit where credit is due, yeah, but you want to wear the robe, you want to stand there, you say he was holding that silver belt, like he, they actually think this is a real belt. I should be worried about Masvidal, he couldn't knock out Nate Diaz, I should be worried about Masvidal, come on man. Quote, for all you real fans out there, you know what's up, Gamebred Fighter is doing everything possible to avoid taking this L. 
Dana White has spoken, so STFU, and take this ass whooping like the journeyman you are. Hashtag once a bum, always a bum. And he's always saying the same shit, which fucking annoys me. He's the corniest dude you get ever listen to. Who? Keep that same energy, man, when you see me. Shit, you don't gotta tell me because I was gonna do it regardless. So when I seen him, I just wanted to tell him, man, I'm gonna fuck you up. Nobody has to tell it to you. You don't have to read it on Twitter and think that Masford I'll write this or anything like that. I'm gonna tell you to your face so you know it. it's coming from me. It's not coming from nobody else. I genuinely dislike you and I'm genuinely gonna show you how much I dislike you when we get in the cage. <laughs> You're the one walking away. You walked away a little. He pushed you back. <laughs> you got a cast on. You're lucky. That's the only reason why nothing's happening. Oh, that's all I wanted to say. That's why I said it far away from a distance, you know? And I told him, I just wanted to tell you something so you don't hear it from nobody else, nothing. I don't know why. I still haven't figured out why he got so mad when I told him I was going to fuck you up. I haven't figured that part out yet. What, what is there to be mad about, you know? It's just the truth, my brother. You don't like the time, don't ask, you know? And he's always saying, say it to my face type shit. Well, I said it to your face. Why are you acting thug down? And then, you know, when, when there's people around and stuff, he acts like he's a thug, just, just released from jail and stuff. You're not. You know, you're a punk, and we both know it. I've known you for quite some time, and you've never been this guy. You, you're actually the guy that asks for pictures and wants to shake hands with, with fighters. And, you know, I just, I don't know. I still get confused about this individual, but I don't think nobody's, uh, nobody's figured him out either. You know, I don't think I'm the only one that's, that's sitting here thinking like, like that about him, you know. Those two are going to fight in Las Vegas, okay? International Fight Week weekend for 25 minutes. They're going to do whatever they want to each other. That fight's happening. Yeah, that fight's happening. You don't have to do it here at Radio Row at the Super Bowl. Right. The story how I ended up going to Australia, Cam is a professional gambler and he made quite some money in one of my fights, he was telling us. And then he was thinking, hey man, I could bring this guy to Australia and uh, introduce him to Australia and continue to see if we can make some money, you know? So he came up with a game plan to execute a couple tours and seminars and things like that. And it worked out well for both sides. Good to see you, man. Take care, right? Enjoy Melbourne. Take care. Melbourne was a beautiful city. The architecture there is completely different than like Miami, Florida, a lot of places that I've been to in the world. It's a lot of water as well. It's just a beautiful place. And you don't think of Sydney being colder or uh, Melbourne, but it was a, it was like a good temperature where it wasn't cold, but it was it was great weather with with beautiful scenery. Melbourne's one of the prettiest cities I've been to. You Cam set that up as a surprise. That was a little bit humbling. That was uh, I wasn't expecting it when I saw it. That was a good one, you know. They kept it a surprise. That was cool. It's very, very humbling to see something like that. The seminar was pretty cool. I got there, it was uh, unexpected. It kind of surprised me. They didn't tell me we were going to do uh, a seminar right away. 
there was a miscommunication, so it threw me off for a little bit, but gym is my environment, so once I got off and I, and I felt that heat and I saw the excitement in people's faces, I was ready to go. I don't really throw it the second time, I just get that reaction out of, by level changing and extending my hands, right? Go, boom, and that's it, that's all I would need. I don't need to throw it the second time. The first two, three times, I, I wanna make solid impact and, and get those reactions out of me. You know, I, I haven't been working with these guys, so I, I just would teach basics, you know, a couple feints that I like to use, a couple distant measuring tools that I like to use, things like that, because I don't really know where the skill range is at. So I'm just showing something very basic that I use myself. The next one, you really don't throw the jab. I'm here and I go one, and I'm getting reactions out of you. Once I know your reactions, I'm just showing it to you. Boom. I saw you drop the hand a little bit, and I go, that's the same thing you're going to do to man. When he gives you a reaction, take it, whether it's this hand or this hand. You are Mr. Worldwide. You're at every single event these days. You're at UFC 247, you're here, 20-hour flight. What's the deal, man? Work. Work, 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 and, uh, and more work. We're lucky to be joined by like a, basically an audience of all your fans, a lot of people going to check out your speaking tour, which kicks off today, first shows in Melbourne, and then you're going all around Australia. For those who may not be aware of it, what can people expect? Some wild shit. <laughs> at some point, once I get the drinks in me, that's it. I don't know what's going to happen. We appreciate you flying all the way down here yes, to Australia, man, and checking yes, us out. Love Thank you here, so man. much, man. Enjoy. Yes, Have a BMF time in Australia. Fuck yeah, man. Favorite is oh, massive. Sorry, I follow. Oh, massive. Did you know? So Miami boy, do you follow the Miami teams? Nah, I don't. Fan, I don't or? watch any sports so, really, man. No other sport? Yeah, I just I watch Muay Thai. I yep. watch uh, collegiate wrestling. I watch fights here and there from a fan of the guy. Yep. That's about it, man. I don't even watch TV. So I can't even tell you like who's winning. <laughs> nah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm the worst for that. I'm gonna need one in the house. <laughs> Over and over, every time I'm sleeping, I'm waking up, all I see is this. All I see is this. All I see is that. I keep I seeing him do this a lot. He's wobbled. He's wobbled, that's what I keep seeing a lot. He's wobbling. It's a mix. It's a mix of the lights that I've seen of him, and it's coming. Do you want to do the photo? Yeah, ready if you are. Okay, ready? Should we do the photo? Dwayne is your photographer. You see who's your driver now, your photographer, everything. He does everything Dwayne does. Ladies and gentlemen, a little ripple of applause for Jorge Masvidal. The first speaking gig in Melbourne was to, to just have a questionnaire, basically, you know, Cam shared some stories about me, said some things, and then um, we just had a QA and a with the fans and just bullshitted and talked for, I don't know, about two hours, something like this, and then we took pictures, and that was pretty much it. It was, uh, when I'm with real fans, you know, people that, like, know me, been watching me fight, yeah, man, because they know, they know so much about fighting as well, you know? Like, the people that watch, that enjoy my work, been, been, I've been working for 16 years. Some of these people have 16 years of MMA under their belt. So you could imagine the, the connoisseurs that I attract, you know, so I do like hanging out with those individuals over, Sometimes the media, because the media is using me, you know, my fans just want to meet me. So it's, it's different. I, it's uncomparable, really. It's a complete different things. Make sure you just get these shoes on, motherfucker. <laughs> because I'm the hardest things out, Playboy. Well, with, it, was, it was Charlie Murphy, I think, that said it best. I'm going to shove these gators up your ass and show your inside some style. <laughs> that's, the That's the greatest line I've ever heard. Line. Shout out to Charlie Murphy and Dave Chappelle for that one. That's a great R.I.P. Charlie Murphy. Do you want me to tell you two jokes to start you off? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Did you hear that Kim Kardashian has found God? Did not. Hear now God is looking for somewhere else to hide. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that Pamela Anderson has auditioned for a role in the next Star Trek movie? Did not. She won't get the part because the Starship Enterprise only goes when no man has been before. Mr. Cameron Noddy. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Yeah. Now, the guest I'm going to bring out, uh, he's a very special person, and that's why we're all here. As a fighter, he's had 48 MMA fights. He's had 
He's always ready, always gangster. Street Jesus! Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Alright, look before Jorge Masvidal came onto the scene, who was the best fighter in the Masvidal family tree? Without a doubt, my dad. Yeah? Yeah. Did you learn some moves from him? Uh, no, but I, I do get, uh, he's got actually longer arms than me and shorter than me, so a lot of his monkey features, I, I guess, <laughs> he has like very, very long arms, and he's like maybe an inch and a half shorter than me. Uh, he was in prison, so I didn't get to grow up with him, so I would see him always, like, through uh, a scheduled visit, you know, so when he finally got out, he came over to my house and we were hanging out, and for the first time ever, we shadow box. All right, messing around, I was already a pro fighter, I was like 22 at the time, mm. and fuck, he was good. He was just fast. He didn't have a lot of like training, but just I saw where I got my speed from from uh, from this yeah. damage. Yeah, just natural hands, like 45 years old, and crazy hands. Mm. Um, what prompted the hands behind the back? You know, with Askren, you know, like I'm not going to hurt you, kind of thing. Uh, was there thought behind that? You want you want the the truth, or you want like, <laughs> the truth? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it it kind of stems from the the Leon that we're seeing. You know? We're like. Uh, Man, through and through I'm a fighter. Like if I'm if I'm gonna fight you, I'm not gonna be yelling, I'm gonna go kick your ass, let's go outside. No, it's just it's gonna happen. You know, I've always been like that. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> if you shot hey, come over here, say to my face, bro. And I don't know, I've kinda just walked towards people with my hands behind my back, throwing mixed signals and then letting them have it, you know? <laughs> so in the Ben Askren fight, I popped up on him a couple times like sporadically where he didn't know I was gonna show up. Like I had seen him and then I waited behind something and this was like in the fight week and then I just jump out and be like, yo, what's up? <laughs> just just for, I can get reactions out of him. Hey, look at me in the face when you talk to me though. And I start doing math in my head. People might think, oh, you're just problematic. No, I'm literally working here. I'm, I'm figuring out what did he do? What did he say? Did he get nervous? Can he, can he adapt? Is he adaptable? So all these things I'm taking notes of and uh, a lot of times he saw me was with my hands behind my back. <laughs> like I'd see him and I'd tell him, I'm not gonna fuck you up, I'm gonna talk shit to you. And I'd have my hands behind my back, you know? <clears throat> and he had his hands behind his back too. So when I did it in the cage, it was kind of like, I got my hands behind my back, I'm just gonna talk shit. Psych, you know? <laughs> uh, he, what, what are you saying here? What, what are you saying? <laughs> I was saying a lot of shit. I, I was saying earlier, right? You can't see it there, but earlier before I was saying some shit. Oh, oh, you guys want to know how evil I really am? If you can wind it a little bit, I'll show you something. Um, since the knee, it, it doesn't go like this. It goes like this, right? I'm hitting a force that stopped. So I overcompensate and I go over like that. And as that's happening, I already know in my head, like, fuck, I knocked him out, but I'm not going to hit that many shots in. Because I, 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 you saw how I felt, I had to grab his shoulder and I posted it on the ground. Instead of just throwing it, landing on top of him, machine gun to the face, I already knew, like, fuck, I fucked up. The referee's only going to let me get, like, two in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The proceeds were going to the bushfires to help out the fires, and it's an idea that camped out of that. I thought it was amazing. I was like, hell yeah. I'm also going to be contributing from what I made on my own campaign to the bushfires to the amazing people of Australia because I truly had a, a blessed time over there this time, and just some good people over there. Have a look at this one. We got Khabib, John Jones, GSP, Conor McGregor, and of course, Jorge in the middle there will be autographed again out the back one on one. Sold to the man there, well done. Sold to the man at the front, bargain mine. The auction winners uh, came backstage. I think we had uh, we took some pictures with the memorabilia. They saw me sign it, of course. Everybody that bought some, I signed it in front of their face, so everything is, is kosher. Yeah, it was a fucking fun time, man. It was pretty cool. Got another question for you. Ask much. 
What's your favorite Street Fighter character? <laughs> From the game? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And I'll kick your butt back. <laughs> Jump in the I'm pretty good. Cool. He's not that good. Don't I'm scared. Nah, Street Fighter. Pretty good. I can make a living off the other side. Trust me. He's not that good. I got you on Street Fighter. Thank you. Okay, and then you want your skin signs. That's okay. You want the arm, the back? Just want... the back of my neck's cool. Okay. Back of the neck, that's the first. <laughs> Well, I can get that tattooed in my hair, I'll cover it. <laughs> Wear your hair up and proud. Exactly. Not at work. Don't write fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care if he does. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's the good. worst. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there you go. Do you want to turn around? Yeah, if you stand next, that way you can have proof <laughs> that he, he signed that. Certified. <laughs> yeah, I've got to get it. Should be right. I'm embarrassing. <laughs> okay, beautiful. All good? All right, thank you. Beautiful, thank there you so go, much. There you go, there you go. Beautiful, thanks, thanks so guys. much. That was through the Moscow people. They wanted to launch a product and they talked to Cam in Australia, being in Australia, seeing they had the connections with the yacht and stuff. And basically it was just to get shots and footage promoting the brand as much as we could, you know. And it just, it worked out perfectly for Cam. They charged the fans to come hang out with us. We set up like a VIP package there. And uh, I got to knock off the, the brand releasement of Mezcal Recuerdo. You see a great call, you just, just run, just sprint, you know? Just it's give him a flying knee. Scary, <laughs> I love it. Ready? 
Oh, you touched my, it! I don't think he touched it! Men's back oh, bend like that. I don't think oh, I can. They absolutely don't. Baddest motherfuckers on planet Earth. Oh, this, is this, is this, is, this is the weakness of Samoans. Yeah, like, you guys can't see this shit. Huh? What do you think Connor thinks he has an advantage of you? What does he have the advantage? Snorting coke. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want it? I don't give a fuck. I'll do it. I'll fuck you guys the fuck out. 